Hi, folks. How are we doing? All Good. How are you, Ron? Good, Ron. Well, I mean, let's get this meeting to disorder as quick as we can. Yeah, I don't know where Andy is. We're going to have a few visitors uh, to the board meeting today. Nicole right. Estrada has already checked in. Right. Um, Roxanne Rostamian plans to attend. So we got to behave ourselves. Kristen Bush is going to try to get in. And Donna Johnson may join us for the board meeting. Wow. Right? Welcome well, visitors. It. Well, they all it's want it. to get rid of those hideous red badges and work toward their blue badges. Yes. <laughs> It says that Andy's on, Just, but his microphone is muted. Uh, he's uh, using some words that are not uh, usually associated with polite company. <laughs> oh, okay. I understand. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry. Whoop. Oh. All right. Hi. Let's go like that. How's that? Can Good. you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you're okay. You're okay. Yeah. Look All right, that. so I, Ione, do you want to do roll call? Do you want me to do roll call and you just check? Let's see. We have me. For the last we, time. Yeah, yes. Vaughn is not here yet. Uh, Roy, I saw Roy, correct? Yeah, I'm here. Jan Jones is here. I'm here. Uh where are we? We have here. Let me just near. I'm going to go down here to this line. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bill Smith is called in with his condolences. Ione is here. Ron Smith, you are here. I am here. I saw Chirito. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Erica, I did not see. Has anyone seen Erica? No. Okay. Um, Alex Keegan is not in. Mike Fried is in. McKinnon is not here. Larry Trotner, I saw him, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Good. <laughs> Laura Stees, I did not see. Christine Montan, I did see. So that should give us a quorum plus our guests, correct? Beautiful. Yep. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who are the um, guests? Yeah. Do we have? I've got Nicole Estrada and Roxanne Rustamian. Is there yes. a third guest? Yes, Robert yeah. Zubla. Yep, yes. Bob Dezubla. Bob yeah. Dezubla is oh, here. Okay. But he's an almost board member. That's right. right. Very shortly, he will be official. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine of us. That should be a quorum, correct? Yes. yes. Beautiful. All right. So approval of minutes. Uh, the minutes from the last board meeting are up here on the page. So moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Beautiful. All right. Any uh, removal items or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, let's move forward. My executive report. I got nothing other than my computer is not my friend today. None of my computers are my friends today. Um, we'll come back to Vaughn. Roy, oh yeah, Roy, I gotta download your, your slideshow. Hang on a second, uh, but go ahead and you can start talking. Yeah, I can fill you in in the meantime. <clears throat> yeah, on fundraising, uh, you know, we're gonna send out three letters. Uh, as the first one's, been out for a month or more. Second one is uh, asking all the Rotary members to network with any companies or organizations they know to try to get funds from these larger companies or organizations. That is ready to go at Printing Solutions, copies approved, and uh, Monica over at Printing Solutions is in the process of sending that out. So you should all see it sometime this week. Uh, the third letter was going to be Remember a thank you letter to all the vendors, drink vendors and restaurants that have participated in the past. And because we're doing this Oktoberfest now, we're going to, I'm going to modify that letter to not only thank them, but uh, invite them to be a uh, vendor or a food 
or drink uh, supplier there at the Oktoberfest. So that's uh, being composed now and that'll go out next week or so. Uh, nice. got... It's coming, I promise it's coming. Well, what, what, what's <laughs> oh, your, uh, your slideshow? Oh, okay, yeah, it makes, so it's a small show, it's only two slides. Um, <laughs> so uh, now I don't, I, I don't, I'm not tapped into how much uh, money or uh, people have contributed through that first letter appeal. Um, Ron, do you, you know what's happening there? Oh, 26,000, 27, 28,000, something like that. Okay. All right. Has it been a lot of small contributions from the normal ticket sale items, or has it been mostly big? Uh, big a handful thousand? of necklaces purchased and um, some smaller pledges on the hikeathon. I've, okay. I've received very little money on the hikeathon to date, so I don't know how much more maybe pledged it will be coming in. Okay. All right. Thanks. Speak to the money I've received. All right, hey, great. Hey, Mike. Mike, this is Ron. Add 600 to the foundation total for fundraiser. We just got a nice check from Alex Galinas. Cool. Oh, nice. And uh, 200 from Marilyn Mucamella. Great. And um, Roy, what you're sending out a letter thanking restaurant sponsors. Is that also going to go to like core sponsors? Uh, yeah, now. Because we had some sponsors who did, who pledged and did not pay, and I certainly okay. don't want to send them a thank you. Okay, is it, you mean pledged and did not pay from the 2020 event you're talking about? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, well we'll get that. Twelve hundred dollar pledges never showed up. I'll coordinate with you on who should be on that list of sponsors before we send it out. And they okay. should make sure you add this me. next envelope that I open. You guys can see it. It's from the Wolford folks. Five thousand dollar donation uh, plus a renewed membership. So. That bumps the total of it in a nice way, Mike. I'll get them and to you. The Wolfords had already donated a thousand dollars each. Well, this is another five. So they, they get into the gold circle. Wow, nice. That's awesome. So, Alex, yeah, the, the sad news: I'm, I'm out of envelopes. I just went to the mailbox today, and I'm kind of I got them all done. So we did oh. all right. We got a bunch of memberships, and we got foundation money. That's a, I like that mailbox. Very <laughs> cool. So you need more envelopes, Ron? What's that? Do you need me to order more envelopes? Oh, no. Lord, no. We're swimming in envelopes now. You did a good oh. job with that. I thought you said we were out of envelopes. So I'm out of envelopes from the mailbox today. I've been oh. opening them up while we were uh, doing the meeting. So yeah. I just got to the last one. It was the best one, though. I'm glad I saved it. <laughs> All right. Hey, we hey, have hey. another interloper here at our board meeting. Yes. Kristen Bush. Welcome. Yep. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Kristen. Uh, and we've had other board members join Alex and oh god, who else? I'm sorry, Ali, I'm, Laura. I've yep. joined. I, I was having trouble with Zoom, but I've got back on. I rebooted. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. I'm having trouble myself. So. <laughs> okay. So let, let, let me finish up here. The last item I want to talk about is the Oktoberfest uh, event itself. Uh, Vaughn North, myself, and Colleen McKinnon had a meeting at Vaughn's house on Saturday, just three days, three days ago, about the Oktoberfest. And uh, we're, the three of us are definitely committed to this. Uh, I did uh, two uh, slides here that kind of encapsulate some of the critical thinking we did there. Um, that's the wrong uh, presentation, Andrew. I sent you a later one. Uh, my computer is down. This is all I've got. OK, all right, yeah. so here we're going. Vaughn modified this slightly, there's not much difference. Um, these areas of celebration, public works is, uh, we're gonna particularly target this guy, Andy Villa, Villa Lobos, and we're not supposed to reveal that. So it's the fact that Andrew put this up here, now I have to swear all you people to secrecy <laughs> because uh, that's supposed to be a surprise for Andy. And uh, that Vaughn took that, his, his name back off of it. Anyway, the areas of celebration that Vaughn wants to, um, concentrate on the Public Works Department of Escondido, Palomar Hospital Organization, Escondido Compact, and Interface Services. So that's, we're gonna emphasize that as, as the areas of celebration for the Oktoberfest. You wanna click over to the next slide there, Andy? Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. And then we also discussed the, you know, some community the positive effects on the community that this Oktoberfest would have. And uh, 
you know, we've been talking a long time about the, uh, the uh, Rotary Club's exposure to the greater community. This would certainly do that. Uh, it's going to be a contribution to fundraising. Uh, maybe get recruitment for new Rotary Club members who come to the Oktoberfest and see what the Rotary Club is about. Um, it provides food and drink vendors exposure to new customers. Because remember, when I try to recruit the restaurants, this is one of the complaints I got back from the restaurants and difficulty getting them to go to the quarter cuisine is they feel it was an old thing. They see the same Rotary members all the time and it really wasn't exposure to new customers for the restaurants, but this certainly would be. So that's a positive. And, the, uh, and because the food and drink vendors are gonna be actually selling food, uh, you know, cash on the table for food is an opportunity for the food and drink vendors to actually make revenue by showing up for the Oktoberfest. So those are the uh, those things with some of the positive effects for the community and the club that uh, we've identified. So I don't know if uh, Vaughn has joined this meeting yet, but I think one of the hey, items. Hey. Oh, hey, Vaughn, how, how thanks for thanks for speaking up. Yeah, um, Andy finally let me in. It took a while. All, all right, good. And I, mean, I know you can be tough. You got to show your papers at the door. Um, right. <laughs> So uh, one of the items here today is we want to try to get the board to approve as a go ahead on the on the uh, Oktoberfest. One item that just surfaced today, Vaughn told me on the phone this morning, we were thinking or we're understanding that this Oktoberfest was going to be on the same weekend, one day apart from the street fair. But uh, Vaughn talked to uh, the guy Patrick Martinez at the city and the street fair is actually a week, ap a week apart. So these two events would be a week apart. So uh, I'll leave it there. And uh, Vaughn, you have anything to add? Well, just the, our date on the 9th of October is the first. The uh, Grand Avenue Festival is the following week on a Sunday. So it's actually the 17th. Huh. So we get them first while they still have money. That's right. <laughs> Okay, nice. so I, I may have asked this question last time. This is Ron, but we're doing this event in October, which is going to take an awful lot of work um, from the club and everybody at a time where we're a little bit sleepy until we gear up for core. What happens when Oktoberfest is over? Are we still going to do a core? And how will these vendors uh, feel about being contacted twice when they haven't heard from us in over a year? Well, we're at our Saturday meeting, we still committed to doing the core as well. You know, Colleen, Colleen McKinnon is going to be the uh, principal organizer of the core, and she was there at the Saturday meeting. And among the three of us, Vaughn, Colleen, and myself, we're still committed to do the core, you know, late February, March, typical time. And uh, so that's, and so we want to, we, we actually, uh, we want to do both. I put together a schedule that kind of subdivides the planning for the Oktoberfest into uh, kind of areas of specialty. And mm -hmm. we're looking for a like sub project managers for each of these areas of specialty, about eight or 10 of them to kind of do a div uh, divide and conquer on the planning for the Oktoberfest. We're and leading up to that, we should also be having the, um, if the schools are going to participate, we should be having the Halloween window painting contest at the end of uh, September, early October. And then following all of that, um, right after um, Halloween, we would be having the cleanup project. So we have a couple of days of other events going on around that same time frame. Okay. It'll be nice to integrate them all. Thank it you, will Roy. be nice to integrate them all. And this year, um, you know, this is a question for the board. Um, we missed the 49th annual window painting contest last year. So do we call this one the 50th and create it into a larger celebration? I just call I it the 49th. Or do we call it the 49th? 49th and a half. Is this a time to have a larger celebration around it and call it the 50th? I, you know, for me, I don't see why, why we would, why we wouldn't just call it the 50th. Why not just call it the 50th? And make it a larger celebration um, being the 50th? I agree to that. Yeah. Um, 
One thing There's we need to consider. There's a lot of activity going on in the community that's going to continue to grow and focus. Everybody is trying to uh, generate uh, more, more exposure. Uh, so I think the, uh, and I, I don't believe we're going to lose participation because of the, uh, the window painting contest. I think those who really have enjoyed it in the past will do it again. Ron is, and others have done a great job with it. So this is a good year to make things look more celebratory. I agree. I agree, Vaughn. I oh, agree on that. With and, and we uh, will we'll pitch the stores and other people with uh, window front. You're going to be part of our 50th anniversary of the window painting. Uh, regarding the Oktoberfest, there's nobody that has been more anxious about adding another major event than me. <laughs> and my discussions with Alec uh, McLaughlin have been uh, uh. very instructive. He said to that question, he said, you guys shouldn't panic over doing this Oktoberfest, his comment was, my wife and I put this on as a tamale festival, and it's basically the two of us. He says, if you do it right, yeah. there won't be huge uh, demands, but the more people we have participate, the better it's going to be. So I would, I would hope that everybody really gets excited about the opportunity to have this celebration of service and if we bring these four designated celebrities uh, you've got palomar hospital you've got public works department you've got the uh, interfaith uh, services and compact uh, as the education compact that's half of the community in population almost. Absolutely. And where is this going to be held at, Vaughn? It's at Grape Day Park. Uh, we spoke with Pat Martinez, who's in charge of city support and facilities. And he says, we're all set. We're all ready for you. Uh, then so could, could we add um, uh, like a, a contest for um, the community to vote on the windows? <laughs> You know, this, this, have, is time, this is a time to have little celebrations. So we're going to have yeah. a six hour event. It's going to run from noon to six. And four of that will be with the band, the Oktoberfest band. And so there'll be fun music going on. Uh, I would love to have other aspects that could be celebrations. Uh, I don't think you're going to have the windows painted, are you, by the 9th? 9th of October? Yes. Absolutely, yes. we can. Okay, well, if that's the case. If we then... know that that's a date, we can definitely get in with the schools, get it scheduled the end of September or maybe the very first weekend in October, have them done in advance. We could award the winners um, from the Rotary Club, but we could also encourage the public to vote on their choice that would encourage people to get down on grand see all the restaurants and the businesses there and encourage some of that uh, movement well then we the definitely community. we definitely want to make this the 50th anniversary then okay well it's, it's going to be the 50th right. i'll get with um with paulette and we'll start planning it because we'll need to have be ready to go as soon as school opens in the fall so we will run we will run social media that will go out into the community and invite people to plan on reviewing the uh, the window penny contest and plan on coming to the event to vote. So we can we should be able to use these tactics to get uh -huh. better participation if. Uh, if we can award that sort of thing, at least 
have those who get awards or get recognition to be there. But the possibility also is. Uh, oh, we could award them for the Rotary Awards at the event, at, at the Oktoberfest, yeah. right. as well as we could create an additional award based on the community voting. Yeah, if we can have, if we can stand up and say, okay, this was the vote done by the Rotary uh, participants, but all those who have seen and would like to express themselves uh, do it by a raise of hand or a round of applause, or just something for fun. Or we could even have a ballot box where they drop a vote in. Or they yeah. drop a dollar in. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> drop some coin. <laughs> also, we're also interested in recruiting some folk dancers to come on for a half hour program and put on some Austrian dancing or something. So there, we will take probably uh, 15 minutes at least and have the uh, service honorees uh, make a brief a set of brief comments about how they love the community and how service oriented the community is. And those people are going to be bringing their audience with them. Okay, so, so you this is set for October 9th. Yeah. Okay, my only challenge is I'm supposed to be leaving for Egypt that day. Well, but you can call up Scott and get set up, and we can work. We can, we yeah. can cover you. Yeah, we'll have to have um, make sure Paulette's there because she's she and I do it together. Yeah. Um, if if I can get into Egypt, that's a different story. Will the right. sidewalk dining limit access to the windows in any way? You know, actually, that's going to increase it. I think, Mike, because by the time this comes, uh, the city and the chamber, everybody is encouraging more community presence down on Grand. The uh, the uh, cruising Grand is starting up, according to the mayor, on the 18th, the next week. Whether that happens, I don't know. But there there is likely to be the most presence. Uh, ever based on if all these events go off that are scheduled to be on Grand Avenue. Yeah, that so would be fabulous. And I'll plan on start walking yeah. Grand in July to start talking with all the businesses and start getting all the windows lined up because I'm hoping we have a much larger um, student base too, because I think they're all itching to get back to doing things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'll start planning that. Thanks. Yeah. Can I ask a question? No. Yes. <laughs> um, how, what's the plan? How um, are you guys going to generate the revenue from this October fest? What's the plan for that? You want me to answer that question, uh, Alex? Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, well, we're going to charge. We're going to charge. Um, a booth rental, so it'll cost them a fixed amount of money to have a booth at the at the uh, Oktoberfest. Uh, presently, there's no plan to take a cut of the receipts, um, but so so far it's just a booth rental um, charge to put the booth in place. Um, Yvonne, do you have any other ideas, or uh, we really did, we really didn't talk about that at your Saturday meeting? No, we didn't. The we are scheduled to have a meeting this coming week, by the way, I did talk with Alex McLaughlin. He says he can either meet with us this week or next. And that's when we're going to be looking at uh, the options we have for fundraising. One, uh, he says at a minimum, if we do an effective job of recruiting uh, vendors, we should get between 15 and 20,000. There may be other avenues that we can draw. There may be the sale of a, a deluxe uh, ticket, which puts people in a better situation seating wise for the program and for the dining areas. There also is likely to be, according to Alex, uh, a, uh, an opportunity for uh, 
a uh, beer garden or two, certainly at the at this uh, October fifth, and those are options where we can charge for access to the restricted areas for alcohol. So. I think it's all up in the air at this point. We're probably relying, Roy, I think, on the vendor as being a minimal revenue source. And then as we can talk with experts from La Mesa on their Oktoberfest, find out where they get their revenues, because there is a, theirs is a walk-on event. And other people that have had experience this is going to be a learning adventure. As I look at it, it's a test case to see if this is a workable outdoor system for an annual birthday party sponsored by Rotary. If we like it, if it goes well, then we would be in a very good position to uh, renew this on an annual basis. But we're going to learn a lot this year, but we have a lot of experience experience that's going to be guiding us to avoid the mistakes, hopefully. That yeah. sounds actually pretty good. Uh, can I make a suggestion on them? Um, you guys gonna be looking um, definitely um, into getting entertainment for this event, right? Yes. So from my experience, it is uh, really cool uh, to contact um, educational programs like dance studios and maybe invite some school bands to play. The thing is when you invite kids to the events like that, every kid brings at least two parents who are gonna be drinking beer and buying stuff on that. So like that would be probably a good idea to bring some youth and, and children groups in there too. I and love the idea, Alex. They, and yeah. I they create way, giant crowds. You'll be surprised. Yeah, and and we, I think we can structure this so that uh, mm -hmm. that we'll be able to do that. The dance schools would be ideal for bringing some cultural dancing from uh, Austria yeah. and Europe for that part of it. And there there's all, there's yes. an accordion there's an accordion school in town, ah. and, and they could. I didn't know that. Yeah, they could put, they could send students and let them walk around the grounds, walk around in just an open uh -huh. type of uh, venue for giving entertainment to. So we, we hope to create a lot of uh, community involvement through all of these different participating experiences. And if anybody has ideas, now is the time because we will, we've, We've, we're locked, we've locked down, or we will this week, the main attraction, which is the Oktoberfest band. Uh, but we've got room to fit in all these different uh, student type participations, dance schools, all that stuff. Any ideas, keep them flowing. Well, I would, this is Larry. I mean, Alex had a really good idea in an email about having this contest with students proposing what would they do with a thousand dollars and improve Escondido? And if we could yeah. get that going, we could we could you know keep that a surprise and award you know award that those the winners at that Oktoberfest, which would bring in a lot of kids wondering if they you know their idea made it or not. So plus there, their I, families, all their families come with them, right. um, and multiple generations of their families come when they're painting and everything. Well, I so, don't know, Larry, Alex, Larry, if you Larry, want to talk about that idea you had, but I thought it was an excellent idea for, you know, us giving out money yeah. to really yeah. get the Escanil spirit going. Yeah, Larry, Larry uh, that, thank you so much for the compliment. But that idea probably, like, we probably do not have enough time between now and October Fest to run this. That, uh, my idea was more like a year cycle that we announced mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. and we actually... Uh, let kids to write their essays for the whole year and business plans and then um, maybe next year we can do because um, I quite not see exactly how we can do it in such a short period of time is uh, kids are out of school now we only can nail them in September and in one month I'm not sure if we can pull down but um, yeah I'm glad you like the idea and I think next year that would be really cool to do it 
if I get enough support. Yeah. Uh, keep, in mind, keep in mind the theory of this event to make it unique for our community is to follow the spirit of celebration. celebration or, yeah, or, no doubt. We're celebrating the birthday, right? Oh. So the birthday is the 8th. We're holding this on the 9th. And uh, that's the concept is to get people involved by having them be recognized in their service in the community including the other four Rotary Clubs. We're going to be working directly with the other four Rotary Clubs to uh, recognize them in the things that they're doing. So it'll be a big day for Rotary, all five clubs. Vaughn, as you Vaughn had a quick, quick comment then, um, along with figuring out how this can be a, a revenue generator for us, um, there's probably quite a few things that need to be budgeted for. So if you have food and drink, you need, you know, ABC licenses and you're talking stage, um, you know, stage and some, uh, you know, audio and yeah. beer garden set up and chairs and table rental. And so it'd be interesting to see what we can offset what the costs are going to be to put it on. Okay, I'm, real quick, I need to, uh, I think all of this is good discussion that we need to have yeah. offline because we have other items in the, the meeting we need to cover. I think the yep. details for Oktoberfest, let's, uh, let's let the committee put that all together. Okay. Is that all right with everyone? Sure. Okay, let's go back real quick, Vaughn. I, I, you may have covered most of it right now, the report from the Escondido Shines Committee. Yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't on, on to do that, uh, we covered half, uh, most of it in this discussion. So the role of the Escondido Shines Committee, just to keep everybody focused, is not to diminish anything on the board. I'm sure you understand that. Uh, I'm excited about this board and its strength in leadership and participation. The uh, we're, We are going to hopefully as a team continue to build and strengthen relationships. Uh, my presentation next week will be a focus on what's called keystone habits. And they are habits which define an organization and their future and growth. And the keystone habit I'm looking at is gonna be relationships, building them between the members, between the Rotary Clubs, with the community and individually with ourselves. So that's kind of the theme that's coming. And I hope you as a board can support that by example, as well as precept, so that we can uh, jump into it with a, a real energy to build relationships across the community and uh, for the benefit of everybody. Bottom line. Beautiful. Comments, thoughts? Good. Well, the only the only last comment is, you know who the committee is, so it's a team. We have twelve board members, we have twelve committee members, we have twenty four solid leaders in a position to each do their thing. You guys keep doing the great administrative work. The committee, uh, the Escondido Shines committee, is focusing on these four areas of building relationships through all of the different activities. So it should be a fun year. Great teamwork. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. This is just not functioning correctly for me. All right, let's move on then to uh, the um, demotion, Jan. Yeah, I really don't have much to say. I've spoken about it before. Um, we are getting people signing up, which is wonderful. And um, all, all of the planning is in place and I'm appreciative for that. For those on the board who have been involved in the planning, I am working this week to get the actual um, agenda out to you all so that everything is clarified and, and we're set to go. So that's it. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun with you, Andy. <laughs> that's good. I heard a rumor that it's, it's a New Year's theme. Is yes. Andy really going to show up in a diaper and a top hat? <laughs> that would be uh, interesting. <laughs> Who told you? 
It's all over town. Yeah. I, have que- I have a question, guys. Um, Jen, can we bring guests to the demotion or is like exclusively for the Rotary members? No, no, no. You can bring guests, but they, you know, they have to pay. Right. You just have to pay for them for dinner, but no, that's fine. Okay. All right, so our consent calendar items, the monthly member report, we're at 111, six honorary for a total of 117. Our May attendance at almost 51%, which is pretty good. And uh, we had four Zoom sessions. Ron, you wanna talk, uh, talk about Dave Plotner or do you wanna push that off? Well, just that um, I will contact him if I can and ask the question. And if he wants to stay on, he'll have to pay. And if he doesn't pay by June 30th, I'm going to take him off the roll. Any comments, thoughts? A good plan. I tried to make a contact and didn't have any success either. Yeah, he's hired, I, I guess he's identified his replacement. Uh, as I was going to say, is, is he going to have someone, the guy who's taken over for him, replace yes. him? Was that a yes? Uh, yes, affirmative. Okay. I got a commitment from Joe Parrish to start coming back to club meeting. We'll see what happens. There you go. <laughs> nice work, Vaughn. Joe's a good guy. He's he a is. damn good guy. And Do we have to pay for his lunch? His blue pin. No, he's, he's going to pay for it. He nice. wants his blue badge, Andy. Well, he's getting his blue badge. I, we, we had a, um, wasn't that the last board meeting? Where we there was an email discussion that we did. Oh. oh, I guess we better talk about that then, huh? You want me to? Uh, when we when we get to membership service, we'll have Mike talk about that. Okay. So let's move on. Treasurer's report. Treasurer's not here. Did everyone get a chance to look at the treasurer's report and have any comments? Money came in, money went out, but not mm-hmm. much money. Yeah, and we still got a lot. My comment will be the club has excess funds available and the foundation is hurting for money. So you figure can you guys can figure out where I'm going from there? Uh, no, I, I well, have no idea. We talk, well, we, well, we then, talked about Mike, that. Mike, I believe you're going into your reserves. Uh, uh, you have this balance. Uh, I'm sorry, there, there's something. There's something going on. I can't hear you. Ch- check your uh, checkbook. <laughs> uh, th- we've talked about that in the past, but Mike, when is the, When do we need? When do we need to make that decision? Is there a timeline? Um, I. Well, certainly the club board would have to approve it. And I don't know if it's the type of thing, thing that would have to be elevated to a vote of the club members. But we collected all these dues from the club in the year of the, the COVID and the club had virtually no expenses. So we're sitting on an extra 30,000 bucks. We may the need club. it for these events this coming year, Mike. Oh, so you're not gonna look for the, to the foundation to cover any of that stuff? That's well, fine. I don't, I don't understand the mechanics of it, but as long as, as long as we've got money coming from somewhere, maybe it's from the foundation. I don't know these things. I know Ron Hi. was telling me something. Well, Vaughn, what, what we need is for your board to work with you to get the club budget set, and which includes the spending expenses of your uh, directors of service. And then once that's uh, settled for, for at the, your board level, it goes... Uh, you, you approve it, and then it goes to the foundation for their approval. So we're right. on the foundation side. We're waiting on your board to put together their budget. It's All right, fun. good. Well, that's good news. Okay. And I, I would love to sit in on the club budget meeting. Well, Someone you are on the board. Exercise fiscal restraint. <laughs> okay. Well, the membership ah. they should be putting together its budget too. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's move on then. Real quick. Andrew, uh, real quick. Yes. Um, he brought up a good point of maybe moving club funds and donating them in effect to the to the foundation could take a vote. Um, we could probably do an email vote this particular year saying through the pandemic, this is how many members and we wanna transfer 30,000 from our operating budget into the foundation. And, and that way we've informed every member and we don't have to push that off um, waiting for Vaughn's budget or the next board. 
music to my ears. I mean, uh, it makes one. sense because we're not going to be able to roll it over into an operating budget. So why, why not put yeah. it to our greater good, these events and our community service projects and whatnot? We have but it. I thought, and Mike I thought we had already it. agreed that we were going to roll over uh, a specific uh, service budgets. Well, within more, the foundation, yeah. it's instead of use it or lose it, we are rolling forward or carrying forward the unused budget. That still doesn't make a, a big dent in what we plan to right. spend next right. year. Right. And what we plan to spend is far in excess of our money. And Jan's waving her hand. I am. I, I just want us to wait until all the expenses for this year come in before we say an amount. Because there will Ooh, be some. <laughs> so so <laughs> yeah. let's wait. Let's wait until we know exactly how much there is left over, which should be, I mean, I, it should, we could make a motion without spe specifying the amount um, and just say whatever is left over f after 2021 expenses are cleared. Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, that I makes just want to be yeah. clear. The, the, the foundation does not dictate what happens to the club money. Right. We are there to right. serve the club. And we all just, right. we kind of act as like the chaperone for the club's big you know night out, but mm -hmm. we do it year round. Um, so, but the um, if we don't you know we could start drawing into our um, endowment account, which technically is not an endowment, but if the club's sitting there on thirty thousand dollars that it doesn't need, and it's earning squat, it makes you know more sense than for us to pull money out of our San Diego Foundation account. So. Could I, could I make a motion that following um, the recognition of 2021 expenses, whatever is left over in the club budget be donated to the foundation? I, I second, second that. I was just gonna propose the same thing, Jan. Mm -hmm. And uh, as of, we'll say as of June 30th, correct? Right. Because we Expenses need to do it before July incurred, 1st, but, right. but we have to do it after the 29th, so. If she can right. spend it all on demotion if she wants. No, I'm not spending it all on demotion. <laughs> <laughs> but there will be some spent on demotion. That's why I wanted to say after the expenses. And we're yeah. charging 40 bucks a head. All we right. are. So, so we, have, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All right, let's vote then. All in favor of Jan's uh, motion that on the 30th of June, any leftover club funds are moved over to the foundation. Um, say aye. 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 I have a question. Oh. Uh, OK, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so um, the I'm just thinking about, um, I'm not fully understand how all that finances work between club and foundation, not yet. At least. Okay. Which is, um, so the $10,000 that was put aside from community service for the next year, are they included in this number or they- what No, happens? no, no, we're, uh, no. again- It's not, it's not about that, okay. Yeah, it's aye. not about that. All right, so we had the motion, we've had a vote, uh, we've had the ayes, any nays? Hearing none, the motion carries, and uh, we will do that. And do we need do we need to inform or uh, have a vote of the club members to do that? Ione, Ron, my mm. my, yeah, I I think that we should. The the club is aware of the fact that we held a lot of dues money that didn't get it uh, get spent, yeah. and we did make a uh, a suggestion, even a promise that. Uh, we would use it perhaps to donate or do good work with it. We didn't specify exactly what that would be. So yeah, I think that we should let the club know, but I am asking that we don't do that until after the dues collection settles. That yeah. could that seriously mutter, muddy the water for collecting dues for next year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sounds good. So, yeah, so we can, we can send out the email on the 30th of June. <laughs> Why don't we wait till the bank reconciliation for the end of June is done? Okay. 
Yeah, send the wait letter for when the we're bank ready and we know the amount. Right. Okay. Wait for the bank reconciliation. Yeah. Through okay. through June thirtieth. Yeah. Okay. Can I also plead for those who have not submitted their budgets for the coming year. Please get those in so that we can uh, complete our uh, requirement. On Beautiful. Number. All right, uh, Executive Secretary, your staff report on dues payment updates. Right, and uh, I put together a quick summary uh, that was in the board packet. Uh, since I did that yesterday, I went to the mailbox today and found dues checks from uh, Pizza Bill, Wolford, uh, Baranowski, Weir, Keegan, uh, Alicia Reeves and Tom Knight. Outstanding. Great. So the, uh, thank, uh, thank you to uh, all of you uh, currently present that paid uh, quickly. It is much appreciated. So uh, we're still we're likely to drop Dowdy. Denise Latrille, does that mean uh, um, uh, Mark is going to also drop? Yeah, or? Earl Dowdy lives in Texas. Denise Latrell is going to uh, leave the club and, uh, and join Kiwanis. She, Mark will remain. They feel they need, okay. you know, wider Mark. community reach. Uh, we've talked about Lisa probably dropping because she's no longer right. connected to Escondido. Uh, Jade, Jade is, is out of town. We have uh, a wonderful replacement. Guessing on Pat Reno, guessing on Taurus, and mm. um, there will be others. Okay. Surprises. Oh, Plotner will be one. So, yeah. All right. So let's Maybe go I'll get members. Maybe a lot of people just for the fun of it, just to give Pat you that Reno has that. moved out of town, by the way. Yeah. 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 All He's right. I already... And uh, oh, sorry. in dealing with health issues. No already... report. No report. Okay. Treasurer's not here. Erica is, didn't stop in, did she, since I've checked in. Um, uh, Chirito, communications. Yes, uh, well, talking about all these finances and budgets, and I think I may have to put a dent on those budget. Uh -oh. I'm on the, um, yes, uh, I was just wondering if you have any budget for the um, internet, why? because uh, last year I've paid for I paid for the platform subscription to do my center view, and um, this year I've just renewed it. I've been trying to look for um, free ones, but it's, I can't really do a, a free platform to do to do the newsletter because I I have no leeway on doing things at all. All right, so, Chirito, actually, I, that would, if you send me the subscriptions, I will uh, update those. I, I basically I have a communication budget of sorts that I I cover all that stuff through yeah and and i mean the the whole area of avenue of communication is a category with line items in the club budget we just need to flesh it out with the money we need and then fund it oh yeah. that's good oh thank yeah. you because i just i was i just tried it before and i thought you know um i had to learn the the platform i had to learn to navigate and and yeah. i don't want to go look for another um Cheap one, so whatever to do that because I yeah. have to learn it again. Yeah. So, um, so again, Chirito, I basically, I mean, I cover the Zoom, I cover um, web servers and stuff. So I, I have, I, you can just, if you want to send it over to me or have me do the sign up for it or whatever, um, I can cover that cost. Oh, thank you, thank you, Andy. I wasn't sure if I was gonna go sign on to my second year, so I just thought I <laughs> I'd pay it with my own money and yeah, like I that. got it. Well, then I'll thank reimburse you. you for that. I'll I'll reimburse you for that. Um, community service. Keith ought to pay for it. It shouldn't be true. Yeah. Keith is paying for it. <laughs> community service committee, Alex. Okay, I'm gonna be really quick. So. Our main fundraiser that's going on is 18 days left, only one hike. So those of you guys, board members, who still did not donate anything, uh, consider um, at least something, please. So um, out of our $10,000 minimum goal, we raised $8,075. So we have 1925 bucks to go to our minimum. And our ideal goal is fifteen thousand dollars. And so, Ron is telling us that we got a little extra this morning too. I think. Oh, really? Ron, Marilyn Mukamela sent in a two hundred dollar check. 
uh, but didn't specify the reason. Oh, I'm okay. guessing it has to do with a, a core like donation, but it didn't say. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh. I thought you had said that they were, they were, uh, some of them were hackathons, but okay. Perfect. So, yes, cheer us on, sponsor us, throw a little money at Alex. <laughs> right, not just at Alex, President Andy is hiking as well, all 45 miles. So, all right. guys, you, it's all yeah. just. It's just to help um, out. So it's it's a it's it's like um um so we have eight, uh, actually eight, um, uh, how to put it uh, correctly participants. Okay, seven humans and a dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> Doc Fauci. The Dr. Fauci, matter of fact, raised five hundred dollars already for our nice. club. Yay. So we should at least uh, give him a free dinner once in a while, maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. Throw him a so, throw him right? on. So um, it's a Nick Tulas, it's me, it's a Christine Montana, it's a Rick Greenstein, Andy, Kirwin, Justin Gray, and Jen Jones, and Fauci. So this is a case and Alex. of the group. Yeah. And Alex. Yeah. So eight, seven people, seven humans and a dog. That's, and you guys can donate to either one. Um, so uh, the links to the website where we can donate is in a center view every week and next week it's going to be a big section about it. Charita, I'm going to email you the information if you would be so, so kind to put it in a center view, that would be great. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we, we need another $1,925 to push us Beautiful. over the final line. All right, uh, uh, Colleen McKinnon, any report? Um, we spent a tiny bit more money. I think it was, I forget what we asked for, but we um, donated to the India COVID relief um, project. And um, after that, nothing else came through. So our committee ended up saving 10000 or not spending $10,000 this year. And we submitted our budget. And I think that's it. Beautiful. Thank you. Christine, anything from Rotary International? Yes, of course. Um, in this uh, atmosphere of us trying to do hikeathon and raise funds through other means, Rotarians in our club have really come through on the Rotary Foundation side. Um, our goal was nine thousand dollars. To date, we've raised twenty-one thousand one hundred dollars to the oh, annual God. fund. So that is really exciting. It's, it's the most since I've been in the club. And um, yeah, and that guaranteed us a $3,000 matching uh, fund for a district grant or multiple district grants and $10,000 to be matched for global projects. So, you know, we raised 21,000, we're getting back 13,000 this year to spend. Um, not a bad investment. So I really appreciate those that, um, you know, came forward and said, I can do 500. I matched it with 500 points and then they're eligible for the next Paul Harris fellow. So um, Vaughn, I have no budget. I'm, I collect money, don't spend any of the club's money. Um, so yeah, that's it. And it's, it's great news. And at maybe Vaughn's first meeting of the year, I'd like to acknowledge those um, folks that are new Paul Harris fellows. Their um, certificates and pins went to their homes um, until we meet again, but I, I'd still like to recognize them in front of the club for a few minutes. Land on it. Beautiful. Yeah, all right, great. Yeah, very right. exciting. We ended on a, on a big note. All right, membership service. Oh, look at the new members on the screen and don't give me yes. credit for it. These people approached us. So I just helped process the paperwork. So real quick, Mike, to go back, and I, we only have two minutes, but um, we had talked in an email, and we probably need to vote on this as a, as a club, uh, about um, uh, moving some of our, our older red badge members missed opportunities into blue badge. Okay, effectively for what now, 15, 16 months, that we haven't met in person and the people who still had red badges didn't have an opportunity to do a lot of the things to move up to blue badge. 
So Mr. Smith, uh, Ron Smith, as opposed to Dollar Bill Smith, um, suggested that we uh, have, when they show up at the first July meeting, they all find shiny, nice blue badges with their name on it. Oh, very nice. And that puts more pressure on our recent members <laughs> to avoid being just a, of a handful of people with those disgusting red badges. <laughs> badges? We don't need no stinking badges. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't think we need a vote. I just think it's a good idea. Yeah, I, I think it's just something within the purview of uh, our board and our membership committee to do good. it. On behalf of Joe Parrish, I thank you because I just talked to him last. I'm going to him speak, and I'm going to give him the. Oh, tell him he has to show up. I, I will. He will be there. Joe has been a very financial up. supporter of our foundation, so let's. I think he deserves the uh, blue badge. Oh, absolutely. So we have Are a couple they, ladies here who yeah visit our board meeting, so they can check one item off the uh, blue badge checklist. Right, and we and one's going to be doing uh, greeting as well. I think. Is it? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. There was, oh, an invocation next week. That's right. Well, I think Nicole and Roxanne are uh, planned to greet. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. Great. Okay. And also, by the way, I, there was an earlier uh, chat message from Roxanne who said she was going to be the um, St. Pauli girl for our Oktoberfest. So we welcome her for that, too. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Larry, vocational service, any report? Nothing new. All right, um, Thanks, Larry, for your great work on the tennis thing. I, we, you deserve a standing ovation for that. Uh, Yay! It's it's still going, Vaughn. It's, we're still not there yet. I'm still negotiating with the city on press releases and and flyers. They want to modify the flyer, and us. but it's still it's still going though. All right, and real quick, Laura Stees, anything from Youth Service? No, other than the Halloween window painting, which we already talked about now that I know I'm going to accelerate the prep for that. Um, that's that's it at this point in time. Okay, and I will throw one at you. Um, I actually want to get Interact up and running again, so maybe we might need a couple of dollars for that in your budget. I don't know. I, I'll have to do some research between now and the end of the month and tell you what it might cost. Yes, and with the school, um, going back to with the kids going back to school in the fall that should be a good yeah. time yeah that's what we're thinking all right any unfinished business any new business all right hearing none i am going to admit all um <laughs> uh, uh let's go ahead and uh end the board meeting uh all in favor of adjourning aye, aye. aye. any opposed Excellent. We will see you all in two minutes.